I had to make the switch from Arch to Debian for a couple of reasons, but then I ended up enjoying a few things more about it, and I think it's actually pretty great. Now the question is, will I keep using it, or will I switch back to Arch? Hello YouTube, it's Dorian. So I'm back home now in Canada. I've been away for over seven months and I spent a bit of time with my family and I'm back at it now. Set up a new workstation, new production machine. Everything is running slick now. And some of you may know that I'm a rolling release user an Arch user, by the way. But on my trip overseas, I had to make a change. So why did I switch? Well, it had nothing to do with Arch itself but more of my situation. On my travels, I was stuck in accommodations with very poor internet, and on a good day, I was getting 300 to 350 kilobit per second downloads, but my average was more like 150. This made a rolling release really hard to keep up to date. At one point, it said I had over 1.5 gigs of updates, but I think this was when GNOME 3.36 was released, but even before that, it said I had over 400 megs of updates, then I had another one gig of updates, and this wasn't going to work with my internet connection. Even if I left it going all night, it wouldn't finish because I kept getting disconnected from the network. Unfortunately, with Arch, you can't set your updates to only download security updates to minimize your update sizes. It's either all or none. Fortunately, I had downloaded a bunch of recent ISOs before I left home, so I had a recent point release for Debian Buster. I was able to make room on my drive to add Debian along with my other distros. And after the installation, I performed an update and it only had downloaded like 120 megs, which was great. So you can see here all the uh, various distros that I have on both my drives. So I'm booted back into Arch here. I just rebooted to show you uh, Arch Linux running GNOME 3.36. And if I open the package manager, you can see that I have two gigs of downloads for updates right now. 1,003 packages. Now this wasn't the only huge update that I had. If you look at this screenshot here from back in April, you could see there was another almost two gigs of updates that needed to be downloaded. And then there's always conflicts with, do you wanna replace this with that during updates? And then I had things that required manual intervention several times, which is fine when you know I'm at home just toying with it, whatever, but using it as a work machine and needing it to be reliable, I didn't have time to do all these updates. I didn't have time to be continually checking the Arch page to see what manual intervention I had to perform. So this was really causing me some grief. And then I came home to my production machine, which had been sitting for months and had all kinds of updates that needed to be done. And that was fine. I performed all the upgrades on my production machine and then it just wouldn't boot into Arch anymore. So I tried to chroot into it. I tried a few things and it just would not go. So that was it, I had had it. But on my trip, I had installed Debian and just started using that and it was fantastic. I only had a few security updates now and then and that was pretty much it. And now the pros and cons of a rolling release versus a fixed release is that of course with fixed releases, you get stable but older software with less updates to download. And with a rolling release, you get recent software as it comes out with a lot more to download and more often. Now, this doesn't mean fixed releases aren't as secure because you do still get security updates regularly and you'll get patches as soon as vulnerability is discovered. But you'll also get updates for software when major bugs need fixing, so you're not going to be completely left with broken software. Now, some people might complain that packages are way too out of date, but honestly, that doesn't make it unusable. That just makes it a little older. A workaround for this is to use flat packs or snaps, or even app images. I personally recommend flat packs over snaps, but if you prefer snaps, then use them instead. This will give you much more recent software versions without sacrificing performance. Myself, for example, I can just switch to my host machine here and I can show you LibreOffice 7, which is running as a flat pack on Debian 10. No real performance loss, uh, everything runs quick and fast and no worries there. But other than that, you'll typically keep the same versions of software until the next major release is published. Now, I've never done a review on Debian before, which is strange to be honest. Now, the downside to Debian would be the 
installer, which a lot of people don't like. So I'll just fire up a virtual machine here. You can have a look, graphical install. There is a workaround to this. The, the installer isn't terrible, but it's not exactly user friendly. I'm sure you've seen it before. I'm just gonna skim through a bunch of this here. So yeah, it's, it's all text and whatever. It, it's not very nice. A lot of people don't like it, especially the partitioning part. However, I'm gonna show you something different. If you just do a quick Google for Debian live ISOs, it'll take you to a link where you can download live images. So here you would choose either torrent on the left or the full ISOs on the right. And it'll take you to this page where you have all the different flavors. So cinnamon, gnome, KDE, and so on. So you just pick your download, load it up. So now we're booted into the Debian live ISO. And one of the options right here is to install Debian. And it's the Calamari's installer, which is a much nicer graphical um, installer, much better partitioning, way easier than the old Debian installer. So if the installer is what you hate, download the live version and it's just way better. And just out of curiosity here, let me just shut this down. I'm just going to do a uh, an update. and just see one package can be updated. For uh, 246 kilobits, kilobytes of archives that need to be downloaded. So sure, done. So that's my updates in Debian. So major bug fixes and security updates are what you're gonna get. So now the question is, am I gonna switch back to Arch? E not yet. Uh, as I said, I have my main laptop here that you're looking at now, now running Debian. And I also have my host production machine, which I've built specifically for recording YouTube videos. It is now running Debian Cinnamon. And I know some of you are probably shocked that it's not GNOME, but I thought, you know, I'll try something different, something simpler something quick. Uh, it's running dual screen. So I have OBS on my other screen up there and I really like it so far. It is stable. It is reliable, which is the point. I don't want a ton of updates. I don't want, um, manual intervention. You know, if I jump on my system, I have work to do, or I have a video to edit or something. I don't want to have to sit there and troubleshoot my system. I want to get in, get it up and running, do what I need to do, and then move on. Now, that's not to say that I'm not gonna keep experimenting with other distros. I have several other distros installed on my main laptop, which I use for work and for play. So Debian will stay as my main distro of choice for now. I have other stuff on my laptop like Silver Blue Cubes, and it's not labeled, but I even have Elementary OS on here. So really, as long as I still have the software that I need to use and it's up to date enough to work and it, it's not broken, there's no real need for me to change anything. I'm still getting my security updates and my major bug fixes, the patches. So I don't really need anything else. I will continue to play with stuff. I have virtual machines to do that. I have stuff on other partitions to do that but I'm definitely gonna stick with the stability of Debian for now, both on my main laptop that you're looking at here and on my production machine, because as I've mentioned, I don't want to have to deal with fixing things when I'm trying to get something done. So this was just more of an update video on what's been going on with the systems that I'm using uh, since I've been away for so long. I spent the last few weeks with my family and my little baby boy. I missed them a lot, so I kind of went, offline and decided I'm just going to spend time with them for a little while. And now it's time to get back into YouTube. Now I've got my new setup and I'm, I'm, I'm kind of excited for that. I also um, updated my graphics card and I got a new capture card for my production machine. So hopefully I'll be a lot more efficient and be able to um, make some, some nicer video, some smoother stuff with that. My, my old one died on me. So Anyways, 
As always, you can also follow me over on Twitter at Dorian.slash. And if you'd like to contribute to my channel, head on over to patreon.com slash Dorian.slash. Till next time, bash on.